When Crash Bandicoot 4 It's About Time was first announced last year, I think many people asked the same question in unison. Where that day one Nintendo Switch version at though? While the Crash Bandicoot series might have lost its way, recently things have been looking very positive with games like the Crash Insane trilogy, which was my first real deep dive into the series as I did not have a PlayStation during Crash's heyday originally. Now the Crash Insane trilogy sold extremely well on the Nintendo Switch, topping the UK sales charts for literally months, so it was kind of weird that no Nintendo Switch version of the game was announced initially. Of course, to the surprise of no one, Crash Bandicoot 4 was then announced for the Nintendo Switch in early 2021 with a very quick turnaround date, plus a budget price of only $40, whereas the PlayStation 4 and Xbox One versions of the game that came out in October of 2020 were $60. So obviously I was very intrigued to see how this game came out, and you know what? I honestly think Crash Bandicoot 4 It's About Time might be one of the best Nintendo Switch ports that we've seen thus far. What's going on guys, I'm RGT85, if this is your first time on the channel, welcome! Be sure to hit that subscribe button, and be sure to like the video. But without any further ado, let's jump into the world of Crash Bandicoot 4, it's about time for the Nintendo Switch, see what this game is all about. So like I said, I'm not the biggest Crash Bandicoot fan in the world or anything like that, so I'm not really up to date with the story or the lore behind these games, but this game has an easy enough to follow storyline that I think will work for pretty much everyone. Now the game actually takes place after the third game in the series to somewhat fall in line with the Insane Trilogy, and features Crash Bandicoot and his cousin Coco. Dr. Neo Cortex, who was the original bad guy from the Crash Bandicoot series, is now teamed up with Dr. Nefarious Tropy, and basically there's like a rift in the multiverse, and Tropy and Cortex want to enslave everyone with their rift generator that allows for more holes to come throughout space and time. Crash and Coco basically have to find these things called quantum masks and use their power in order to stop them. It's standard platformer affair with the story, but I do think the Rift stuff and multiverse stuff is actually cool because it plays into the different levels you encounter and the characters you meet along the way. Now first off, let's talk about the gameplay of Crash Bandicoot 4 first because honestly there is a ton of stuff to go over with this. At the start of the game, you have access to both Crash and Coco, and you can play as either character, although they play the same, so it's pretty much just a cosmetic thing. The best way to describe the gameplay is a hybrid of like 3D and 2D gameplay, honestly pretty similar to the original trilogy of Crash games. Some areas have you moving on a 2D plane from left to right and up and down, some have you moving on a more open 3D plane, and the game does a good job of mixing it up throughout the levels and your adventure overall. You're constantly being thrown new gameplay mechanics as well, such as riding a boat, sailing on rails similar to something like in Sonic Colors, and of course utilizing the quantum masks. Now the quantum masks you have will appear at certain areas in certain levels and allow you to change things within the levels, such as adding or removing platforms, and it's used to get into some pretty tricky platforming situations that will require pinpoint precision to well, make it out alive. Now beyond our two star characters of Crash and Coco, there are also sub-characters you will play as as well, and they play completely different than our main cast, adding in a lot more variety. They also have their own unique side stories and unique levels as well that intertwine with the main story, so it's really cool to play these and sort of expand upon the game and the universe, or I guess the multiverse, that we are in within Crash Bandicoot 4. Each level has a set amount of gems that you can acquire by completing certain tasks, and you aren't going to get all those gems in your first playthrough of the level, and probably not on your second or third either. Some gems are acquired by your completion of box breaking in the level, as each level is full of boxes with Wumpa Fruits to collect. Some gems are hidden gems, some gems are based on beating the level with 3 deaths or less. Now a new feature that's been added into Crash Bandicoot 4 is what they call the modern feature, whereas instead of having just 3 lives and then you have to restart the level if you die after that, you could just simply restart from your last checkpoint, but you won't get that gem for beating the level in 3 deaths or less. Aside from being a huge collectathon in that respect, the gems also allow you to unlock new character skins for Crash and Coco that you can use in the game, with a great variety of different costumes that are very creative and honestly look pretty cool. The game is broken up into 10 dimensions, each having a set number of levels for the main game, plus the additional character missions, plus the gem collecting within those levels, and then there's even more content with the levels as well. You can acquire VHS tapes hidden in the core levels that give you these flashback levels with some additional challenges, and then there's the inverted mode. 
During the game, you unlock the inverted levels, which are past levels that you've already played through, but with a twist. They are now backwards and feature all sorts of differences from your original playthrough of them in terms of visuals that really add a whole nother level to this game. Plus, the hidden gems are now hidden in different places from those previous levels, and it's really a mind melt playing some of these, and they're all really extremely creative. Oh yeah, and there's also time trials for all of these levels as well, just in case you needed a bit more content. When it comes to the controls of the game, whether we're talking about Crash and Coco or the side characters of the game, honestly, it's all very nice and fluid. Crash and Coco primarily jump, double jump, and spin attack to take out enemies in their way, much like in the original games, and the side characters all have their own unique moves and controls as well, and honestly, like I said previously, they feel extremely different than our main heroes. Now, out of the three side characters you end up playing as, I would say that Tauna, which is the first character you encounter, is my favorite because of the more melee-based of attacks that she has and the grappling hook that she has as well. So we have a ton of content to obviously uncover in this game, nice and solid controls, but what about the presentation? Now this game was of course built for the PlayStation 4 and the Xbox One, and let's be real, while some ports shine very nicely on the Nintendo Switch, others, well, well they don't. And at first I thought maybe the budget price of $40 was because of the potential heavy downgrades in terms of things like visuals, but I honestly don't think it was that at all. Obviously, some things had to be reworked for the Nintendo Switch version of the game, with the most noticeable things going to be frame rate and resolution. Now, Crash is mostly capped at 30 frames per second on the Nintendo Switch according to Digital Foundry, whereas the game on the PlayStation 4 and Xbox One often hit 60 frames per second, but I don't really think that changes the experience all that much because it's not exactly like this is a fast-paced game or anything like that. Now the resolution is obviously downgraded from the PlayStation 4 and Xbox One versions of the game as well, and some of the more intricate graphical and lighting effects have been removed. But what does this all mean? Honestly, really nothing I feel. I still think this game looks absolutely brilliant, whether you're playing it in docked mode or in handheld mode. Playing on my 65 inch LG CX screen can really showcase some of the issues with Nintendo Switch graphics, but I literally had zero issues playing it on my television. I thought all of the colors looked great, the textures looked nice and clean, the animations for the characters looked absolutely superb, there's lots of cool little things happening in the backgrounds of the levels themselves, and the level design itself was super creative and I feel really helps with this style of game. While handheld mode is of course at a lower resolution as well, there's no Vaseline smear that we often see with more taxing Nintendo Switch games, and the small screen still makes the environments and the colors look absolutely great. The audio is fantastic in the game as well, with some solid voice acting and some really catchy tunes. I've been pretty positive about Crash Bandicoot 4, it's about time thus far, but are there any sort of drawbacks to the game? Are there any issues with it? I do have a few minor things I just want to go over real quick. First off, Crash Bandicoot games can of course be pretty challenging, and this one really isn't an exception, but I did notice sometimes the challenge spike within a level itself would kind of just come out of nowhere. Most of the levels aren't super long or anything like that, and I'd often be strolling through a level having no issue, taking out enemies, not dying, and then all of a sudden there would be a set of extremely tricky jumps that would cause a multitude of deaths in a row. Sometimes you have to take phantom jumps as well, hoping that jumping below is the right way to go, which if you're playing on the modern setting isn't a big deal because, well, you always respawn at your last checkpoint, but if you're going at it in retro mode, it would obviously bring you back to the start of the level after your three deaths. Also, sometimes the levels can be a little bit confusing as to where you're supposed to go next by switching the gameplay from 2D to 3D in so many sections, but really this was an issue that I had few and far between and only really sort of stuck out on maybe a handful of the levels in the game. Overall though, Crash Bandicoot 4 It's About Time absolutely kicks ass on the Nintendo Switch. The game looks great, the game plays great, it sounds great, and it is so packed full of content that it's pretty insane, no, no pun intended, that this is only a $40 release on the Nintendo Switch. With great level variety, a ton of things to unlock, a ton of things to revisit in the game, and the core graphical and gameplay experience not being compromised for this version of the game, I can easily say that Crash Bandicoot 4 is one of the best Nintendo Switch ports that I've played, and this game is worth every penny of that $40 price point. And while yes, the game also released on the PlayStation 5 and Xbox Series X now with HDR and all that stuff, the gameplay is exactly the same, and it's also $60 on those, so the Nintendo Switch version of the game is really showing its value. 
Now let's hope that the Tony Hawk HD games that are coming to the Switch later this year also get this sort of same love and attention with them as well. Alright, so those are my thoughts on Crash Bandicoot 4. It's about time. Honestly, I was pretty blown away by this game. It is so good. If you're a fan of platformer games and you haven't played this on the PlayStation 4 or the Xbox One, it is definitely worth $40. I've played so many Nintendo Switch ports on this channel, and while some of them just absolutely suck like WWE 2K18, there are games that I feel really stand out. Games like Doom and Alien Isolation, and Crash Bandicoot 4 is right up there with some of the best Nintendo Switch ports that we have seen thus far so let me know in the comments section down below if you plan on checking out this game or if you played it previously or if not why not because if you like platformers you should buy this game like legit it's, it's that damn good and as always guys thank you for checking out this video if you are new to the channel make sure you subscribe and turn on notifications check out other videos on the channel as well this is actually the fourth time i filmed this video because things kept messing up the third time i i thought i hit record and i never even hit record so i, I don't know i guess i'm losing my mind or something like that and and as always, I'll catch you guys on the next video. Later.